Okay, in this seventh video in the series, I'm going to talk about uh, some basic software that I would install each time I either reinstall or rebuild um, the simulator. And that's uh, FSUIPC and associated software called uh, WideFS. Um, just to talk about uh, the basic first software that I would install each time I upgrade the sim. So FSUIPC is um, is a brilliant program in my opinion. It uh, was designed by a guy called um, Pete Dowson and it basically enables add-ons and um, the computer and various utilities to interface with um, the simulator in its basic form and associated with that is a program called um, WideFS and WideFS basically uh, can go on the client PC, a second PC on a network and can allow utilities, uh, ATC weather programs to um, to interface with the sim basically fooling them into thinking that they're on the same machine as the simulator so here's how you get it if you just go to uh, any web browser uh, just put in fsu ipc and uh, the first hit will be uh, the website uh, you can see there are different versions for um, different versions of the simulator whether that be fsx or um, prepared and you just need to um, to select the simulator so in my case i'm running uh, prepared 4.5 and, and also prepared 5 so that's the um, most most recent version FSU IPC 6 so click on that uh, download it uh, to your download or your desktop wherever you prefer and you also need to scroll down and download uh, the associated program uh, wide FS so once you've downloaded it if you um, go into the download folder, just extract both of the um, files to a new folder, then go back into uh, the FSU IPC uh, folder and then just simply run uh, the uh, EXE. And that will then install FSU IPC either into um, your documents add-ons folder for uh, later versions of prepared or into a modules folder within um, the main flight simulator uh, folder on earlier versions so it's um it's basically free for the first uh, for the main interface but if you want to have the greater functionality then you need to uh, buy the software and in my opinion it is massively great value for money it's about 30 35 pounds i think for both the uh, fsu ipc and for uh, wide fs when you install it if you've purchased it you just need to make sure that you read carefully how to put in the um, licenses put in each of the two licenses um, separately and then you'll have access to the wider facilities of um, of the program. So let's have a look at what it looks like when it's installed. So if you go into the um, simulator, uh, you'll see at the top of the add-ons menu, you'll have a new drop-down called FSU IPC. If, if it isn't there, then something's gone wrong and you need to go back uh, to the beginning and reinstall it. So let's have a look at what FSU IPC uh, can provide. And this is the paid version. So there are a number of different tabs and they do a number of different things. So here you can see there's a tab that is around logging. So that's for troubleshooting, for enabling you to see what the simulator is doing. And it can log all sorts of different uh, capabilities and the data within the simulator. A second track. Uh, traffic tab can um, allow you to just configure your traffic to enable you to set um, when where and how um, traffic appears within 
the simulator. This third tab, miscellaneous, um, <laughs> intuitively named, but it is actually a myriad of different things. So um, on the left hand side, um, assorted functions. So for example, mouse trim, um, various um, facilities to change how and where you interact with uh, the sim. And on the right hand side, literally uh, titled yet more a myriad of different facilities all of which as you can see are pretty are pretty self-explanatory and um, the next tab is the save tab so you can set auto save with this tab and um, whether or not it auto saves when you're on the ground or just in the air and the second half of this tab is uh, gps out so that will enable the sim to send GPS data out to a secondary uh, utility um, or across wide FS across the network to be picked up by some form of GPS enabled um, program. The remaining tabs are a, a myriad of different tabs that are around configuring uh, your joystick, your yoke, uh, pedals and or uh, throttle uh, quadrant and you can see here there's um, there's joystick calibration a dedicated tab for um, for the joystick uh, there's some hot keys so um, you can assign different hot key functions within this tab and um, key presses so they are pretty again self-explanatory and the main the main tab uh, that I use and I think is really powerful is uh, buttons and uh, switches. What you need to be wary of in this tab is that if you set a facility within FSU IPC you need to make sure that you delete then the assignment to that button or axes within the main simulator controls otherwise you might have some um, conflict there. So here's how you just set up the button. So in terms of um, the the joystick in this case or the yoke if you just click the button you can then um, just move over here and select the um, send FS control and then you can pick whatever control you want to assign um, to that uh, button and you can see down here you can also um, pick up a key send function for example with um, air traffic control and I'll cover that in the next um, video if you want to send a push to talk button across the network then you can use the um, the key send function and uh, that's a bit more complicated and I'll go into that in more de detail in the in the next um, in the next video so back then to um, network basics you really just have uh, in my case I've got two computers running across the network but the principles of WideFS um, apply the same however many um, secondary PCs you've got so for the purpose of this conversation we talk around the client PC so the client PC will be the PC with air traffic control weather uh, utilities running uh, remotely and the main simulator PC um, where uh, where you're running the graphics and the main sim program. Uh, traditionally the simulator PC will be the more powerful one and the client PC can be a little less powerful. It doesn't need as strong a process and it certainly doesn't need um, as powerful a graphics card. So there are um, two or three other things I think you need to remember just in terms of real basics. So transferring uh, files and information between computers can be a bit of a nightmare you can use a USB or an external drive in my opinion what I've done is uh, installed a network attached storage drive to the network so I've got three PCs uh, two running the uh, simulator and the family PC and so it's quite easy therefore to see that network to network attached storage uh, from each of the PCs just drop a file into the uh, documents folder of that and pick it up from another PC. In my opinion that is by far the best way um, to move uh, documents and information. Second thing 
you need to think about is um, is the firewall. So the firewall can be a bit of a nightmare. I personally um, disable the firewall on the internal private network. That is entirely up to you. It is it is a slight risk. You need to make sure you've got a good virus checker running on each of the PCs, and you must not must not disable the firewall um, to the um, main um, outside external network, and also the firewall on your router must be um, properly um, configured. And the last thing you need to do is to um, look at sharing your folders. So here's a how you share. You you um, you need to share all the folders that you want to see from uh, the client PC. Um, often the best way to do it, in my case, um, the main simulator is on drive C. So the easiest way is to go in. If you right click, uh, click Advanced Sharing, and you can then share the um, entire drive and you can see that then from uh, the client um, PC. Depending on the versions of Windows that you're on, there are other methods that you can use to access and make visible um, folders. Um, work groups for some versions of Windows work really, really well. Um, but for me, those three basic issues, network, network attached, storage, sorting out the firewall and enabling the folders you want to share are the principal things that you need to do to make this work effectively. Networking can be a bit of a nightmare and you might have to Google and or search for particular answers to particular problems that you might um, encounter. But it is quite rewarding when it actually works. So back to WideFS. So as I said, WideFS is simply a program to fool um, other utilities, add-ons and programs on the client PC to thinking that they're basically interfacing directly with the simulator on the main simulator PC. You go back to the folder where you downloaded it. Um, uh, just take the whole folder and drop that folder onto um, into a folder on uh, the main drive of your client PC. Uh, the instructions say that all you need to do then is to uh, basically run the wide FS EXE. So you might want to just right click, create a shortcut, um, put that shortcut on your desktop, but leave the EXE program in the main folder that you just copied over. That's really important that it's in the same folder as the DLL files and um, eventually it will create an INI file when you run it the first time in that folder. That is basically it. As I say, the documentation uh, that is attached um, in the same folder is pretty comprehensive. You don't really need to read in it, into it in a great deal. Of detail. The only thing I found that you might need to do is to add under the user section of the INI file, open it up using Notepad, and you can drop in then um, simply either the server name or the IP address of the main SIM computer um, that you're running your main SIM on. You might not need to do that, but I found that I've I've needed to do that each time that I've installed it. And that's set out quite clearly in the manual um, here at page 10. It says quite clearly what those additional um, tweaks to the INI file are and how you need to configure them should you need to. I think that's it. So when it's connected, you can see here that uh, you'll see a strap line across the top of the simulator to show that it's connected um, across the network, and that's success. So those of you who are running Xplane, um, I run Xplane 11, as I think I've said in the earlier um, in the earlier videos. Then you can download a similar program with similar functionalities called XUIPC. 
So again, next to your IPC, put it in a web browser. You can see here that it uh, defaults straight to the website. Uh, download XUIPC, and it also comes with the um, XP version of uh, WideFS. You need to put that into, you can see here, into the um, main folder of your simulator, uh, the resources, and then into the plugins folder. And once you've done that, um, you can see in the simulator, it will actually have a, an additional menu item under plugins for XU IPC, where you can configure all the functionality um, and the interface. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. Hope that was helpful. If, um, if you found it helpful, useful to hear comments about what uh, you think about the videos, what you think I might cover in later videos, and, and maybe even consider uh, subscribing. I am going to do some videos on add-ons, some videos on weather, and the next video will be on um, my evaluation of ATC programs and my, my preferred uh, choice. So I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.